Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. <clears throat> My throat's acting weird. I think I have to cough or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, today I have a classic Goosebumps book review for you today. Uh, it's one that I have owned for a very long time, this particular copy. Uh, I got it at the famous skating rink birthday party I constantly talk about here on the channel because I'm a nostalgic fool and I have to constantly talk about my past and how I got into Goosebumps and whatnot. Anyway, this book review is for Bad Hair Day. Um, this cover is so bizarre looking. That That's some weird Tim Jacobus art right there with this crazy looking bunny. Um, this is one of those books that I always saw in the library at school when I was in elementary school. Uh, kind of like Why I'm Afraid of Bees and Shocker on Shock Street, that the cover didn't interest me. Um, again, I got this as a present for a birthday when I was very young, and of course you can tell it's a 2003-5 uh, reissue copy. I never had any interest in reading this. It's one of those ones, like I just mentioned, that the covers weren't cool enough for me, like Not a Living Dummy or Haunted Mask, where I wanted to get into that and read that awesome book. And I kind of regret that now. I think I've picked up Bad Hair Day two or three times in my life since I had that birthday when I was about seven or eight. I'm turning 26 at the end of this year. Uh, it's been so long, but I think I've tried to pick up the book two or three times, just like I have with Headless Ghost, and I never got through either book as far as I know. Um, Ghost Next Door I read a couple of times, Not a Living Dummy 1 and 2 I think I read a few times, uh, maybe once for the third of that. Bad Hair Day is brand new to me, essentially, because uh, I don't remember a thing. I remember it had something to do with Amazo, the magician, and I remember that Amazo was a big part, if not the centerpiece, almost, of the live show from back in the day. Not the, the, not the stage show, but the one that was, like, at Disneyland. You can find the videos online if you want to check that out, by the way. Really cool show. Really, really creative, fun show that I would have loved to have gotten to have visited that, especially when I was a kid and Goosebumps was uh, kind of dying out when I got into it, but... <laughs> Um, Bad Hair Day, as bizarre as it sounds, was a really sweet, kind of fun book. There wasn't really a whole lot of scariness to it. There were some things that creeped me out personally that I just thought were just a little eerie. But it's not meant to be a scary story. This is a more lighthearted, kind of just fun, and again, silly is the word I would use with this. Um, I appreciate Goosebumps books for what they're trying to be, more so than what they actually are a lot of the time. That's why I give a lot of higher reviews uh, and, and ratings at the end of my reviews for a lot of books that people don't like as much. And sometimes there's books that people love that I can't stand because they're terrible and I put a really low rating on them. This is the one that's probably going to get uh, a higher rating for me because of what it's trying to be and how much I enjoyed it for the most part. Now, by the way, I want to apologize too because it's been so long since I posted a video or a book review specifically. I just... I don't know. The last week I've been so busy with so much. My friend got married last Saturday, and then on that Sunday we were busy with church stuff. I've been so busy all over the place I haven't had time to really read. And then the nights I have, I've wanted to watch TV. So it's been a, a really lazy mess. I'm really sorry for that. But I wanted to get out this review for you tonight. I meant to last night, didn't get a chance. But still, Bad Hair Day is essentially about a kid who loves magic. He and his friend Foz actually go to a magic shop. How many times have you ever seen that in your life? Just a store that sells magic props and tricks and stuff. And they go in there all the time and they never buy anything and the complainer, the owner, excuse me, complains constantly to them about not buying anything. They're basically gonna put his, his shop out of business because of that. And the man actually knows how much of a big fan the main character and his friend Foz are of magic, especially the main character. And the main character has a lot of tricks and little things he's come up with himself. A lot of amateur tricks that he's learned, like how to pull a rabbit out of a hat and stuff like that. It doesn't always go so well. You have a couple of examples of that in the book itself. But that shop owner actually gives the main character and his best friend, Foz, two tickets to see the main character's favorite magician, Amazo. Amaze, like A-M-A-Z hyphen O. His show is coming here soon to town, like the next night or that night. And it's going to be past bedtime, essentially. It's going to be pretty late. It's a school night. And the main character and his best friend pretty much can't go because of their parents. And that immediately starts the idea of sneaking out because the main character really wants to see this. He doesn't know how many times he'll get to see Amazo uh, before he would retire or die or anything like that. So essentially, he tries to sneak out that night. His sister catches him. Her, his sister's name is Jenny, I believe. She loves to do karate. She beats him up all the time. That's pretty horrific to watch. Uh, she makes fun of him and his magic love and all that kind of stuff. They end up sneaking out and they go to this trick show, magician thing, stage show, whatever you want to call it, live show, I don't know what to call it. They go to that and some weird stuff tends to happen after this. 
And again, it's more of a silly book. It, it doesn't really have a whole lot happening in it. It's a very meandering book. It's kind of like, it, it takes you like 60 or 70 pages to get to the big stuff that happens in the book. But it's also a sillier book, kind of like Why I'm Afraid of Bees, and it has more of a humorous kind of angle to it. It's not so serious all the time. And I like that. I'm fine with that when Goosebumps does that, but when Goosebumps does that right is my biggest concern. This, for the most part, I think was a really solid book. I enjoyed it. It's not my favorite, not even close to being like in my top 20 or anything, but it was good. It was fine. I liked it. Uh, to be out of the old 62 classic books, I enjoyed it. I thought it was very fun. Out of a book that I never really wanted to read that much, I thought it was cool. I thought it was a decent read. I recommend it if you haven't read it before. Uh, I don't really have much more to say about this. I think it's a decent Stein book. I think it was a cool little filler type book between whatever came before and after this. And uh, that's really all I have to say about it. It has some cool artwork and it has a relatively decent story about magicians. How many times have you seen a 90s magician themed book? Especially a horror series for that matter for kids. Remember back in the day in the 90s when we were all obsessed with magic, like kits and stuff from like Target? I had two or three different magic sets from Target that came with a VHS cassette tape. You had the little toys, like, it was one that was like purple balls, and you had, or no, it was purple cups. You had like green balls, and you would learn to like do the whole trick about moving the cups around, and like people would pick the wrong cup, and it would turn out you'd have three balls pop out of the next thing you moved. Weird magic tricks from back in the day, but we were all obsessed with them. All my friends loved those things. We had a blast with playing that, playing with that kind of stuff. You don't see a whole lot of evil magician type stuff nowadays. It's interesting, you know? I don't know what happened with that, but it just kind of died out, I guess, since the 90s have died out, too. It's been 20 years. We'll never forget. Anyway, Bad Hair Day. What would I give this as a rating for the book? It was a good book. I enjoyed it a lot. I'd give it a high 3 out of 5 stars. It was... It was decent. It was something that I enjoyed. It was silly. It was fun. Fun is a big word to use with this. It has a lot of humor, like I said. Uh, that's really all I have to say about it. It doesn't have too much going on behind that. Um, it is what it is. So I know there's also a TV episode, and I would like to watch that tonight, possibly, and possibly get a review recorded. I don't know if it'll be uploaded, but I'll try to get a review recorded and eventually, God willing, try to get it posted. Because I'm curious about whether the episode, will, the episode will be as good as the book was. It feels like it'd be a great potential for a 20 minute long episode that could be wrapped up in no time. Um, a lot of the books for Goosebumps that are, you know, really in depth, like One Day at Horrorland or Night of Living Dummy 2 or 3, it's hard to do that in 20 minutes. Um, this is one of them I think that has to be done in 20 minutes. I don't think it's a two-parter or anything like that. So I'll be interested to see how this little episode goes because I enjoyed the book quite a bit. Uh, anyway, what are your thoughts on Bad Hair Day? Did you love this one? Is this one of the ones that you skipped as well when you were a kid, if you were reading these when you were a child? Um, did you like it? Did you hate it? What were your thoughts on this? I can't believe that there are people out there, like there's one particular viewer that I talk to a lot in my comments that says that he hates one of my favorite books, You Can't Scare Me, but something like this he considers above that. I, I don't know. I guess it's just a taste thing. I don't know. If you like more humor, this is going to be for you. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. Thank you guys for watching. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today. And goodbye.